Hey guys, how's it going? It's Jados X here and welcome to Minitap Monday episode 11. Today I'm going to show you guys how to create great looking lighting and rendering using the Scanline renderer. Now if you've been following my tutorials, you know, you'll know that I love Mental Ray, but that doesn't mean that Scanline can't deliver good results, you just have to know what to do. So in this uh, test scene which I have set up here using a, the helmet from my Iron Man Mark VI which I'm working on, um, if we just give it a quick render with no modification to the scanline settings at all you'll see that it's kind of dodgy, it looks like it's out of a bad game there's no lighting or shadows or anything like that going on so we're gonna fix it up the first thing you want to do is you want to get your materials right because you have to get the light spreading over the object correctly to get a good lighting result and the materials are what controls that so if you've just dropped objects into your scene without applying materials yet, just using the basic standard materials is a great place to start because it has a quite a soft lighting by default, so it sort of spreads everything out evenly. So I'm just going to start by dropping it over all my objects. Here we go. I might just make the floor one a different color for ease of demonstration. A nice, nice sort of fluoro blue will do. That sounds good. All right. So give it a render again. And you'll see we're, we're getting a bit closer, but we're not quite there yet. So to get the real results, what we have to do is go to the Create dialog, go to the Lights panel, so make sure that the Lights is pretty much the middle button, then make sure you create a Skylight, and we can drop that anywhere in the scene, it doesn't matter. Now, in your viewport, things are going to be looking pretty cool now, but you'll notice that when we go to render it, that there's no definition there whatsoever. So what's happened is the viewport's doing something which the renderer isn't, but to get the renderer to do the, the ambient occlusion which we're seeing here, which is basically what the skylight creates, you hit F10 to open up the render dialog. I've already had the advanced lighting tab selected, but you just have to go to advanced lighting, and then you go to select your advanced lighting plugin, and you click light tracer. Now when we render, which it may take a little while depending on the complexity of your scene, you'll see the ambient occlusion working its magic and you'll have that great soft shadowing and definition that we can see in the viewport. Now this is a great place to stop if you're doing renders such as maybe like a, a technical demonstration video or a like a model walkthrough. This is some great lighting to use there. However, you can combine this with your classical lighting to create some pretty cool effects. So if we just go and we create, go back to the create panel and we create a target spotlight, I'll just close the render dialog for the moment. So we'll just create a target spotlight and we'll drop it into the scene. This basic principle applies to all lights so it doesn't really matter. Um, there we go. And what we'll do is I've still got the light selected, go to the modify panel and turn shadows on. Here we go and I'll just drag that a bit further back. Okay, there we go. Now we'll give that a render again. There we go, and I'll zoom in a bit further, but now what's happening is you're getting the standard drop shadows from lights, but you're also getting that soft ambient occlusion shadow below it. Now by default, some lights use a shadow map, so it may create this sort of blocky result which you can see here. To fix that, all you have to do is go into the shadows uh, portion of the general parameters rollout and click this drop down and go to ray traced shadows. Those ones work best with scanline, however shadow maps can give you a faster result. Now what you should see is you should now get a nice crisp shadow. However, in some situations, the shadow will look quite jagged. In my case, it doesn't. But if it does for you, all you have to do is turn on some super sampling. So here's how you do that. You go to F10 uh, to open the render dialog. Then you go to Renderer. Now what you do is you go down to the global super sampling uh, portion of the default scanline renderer rollout, and you click Enable Global Super Sampler. That allows you to put anti-aliasing on shadows and reflections in the scanline renderer. Now, it looks pretty good for me already, but if it doesn't look good or it looks quite jagged for you, turning this in will resolve that problem. You can pick from any of these options. They um, There's full information about this in the 3ds Max documentation, and some each option will provide different results, sort of speed versus quality. Max 2.5 star is a great place to start. So in my case, we'll render it out again, but I don't think we're going to see much of a, a result in render changing for me, but it may improve the result for you. So let's see what it looks like. 
Yeah, maybe a little bit smoother for me, but not much more. So that's how you can create some great looking lighting using the scanline renderer. It is a great alternative to Mental Ray, especially if your computer has a slightly slower processor, because Mental Ray often will take more CPU up, even though it does give generally a better result. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed, and I hope you've learned something.